Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. I am Richard. Today I am going to bring you back up into space. We are going out in the big black darkness, the voids, trying to get the best cargo that we can and hopefully sell it for the best price and not get shot down along the way. I'm going to show you Space Lane Traders. This is a 1 to 4 player game, around 90 to 120 minutes of gameplay. You can also play 8 players on this one, but then you would have to play 2 games. This is a game where you portray as, well, a space lane trader, trying to upgrade your spaceship, trying to get new stuff for them, new weapons, new speed, or maybe not get a whole new spaceship. In the beginning you will of course start with a smaller used one, but eventually you might just become rich selling goods up in space. I'm going to show you the setup of this game, I'm going to give you an overview of the gameplay, so let's just have a look at it. This is the setup of the board. In the middle of the playing area we have put the big board. And if you are a beginner, you should start with the Terra side. And once you become more advanced, you can flip it over to the Omega side. Up here, we have shuffled the debris cards. We have shuffled the equipment card. We have found the cloaking device and put it next to the equipment deck. And put up five random equipments next to. This is a three player game, so we have to block some planets out. We need to block out Alpha. Vice and Luiten with not in play tokens. Now, if this had been a four player game, we would not need to do that. Each planet that has a white field have been filled up with the white cubes, representing cargo that you can buy and trade. We have sorted up the 12 different smuggling tokens, sorted up the boost tokens and put them face down so the numbers are not showing sorted up all the different credits and put yellow cubes on each number one level on the demand board taking the black little token here and put it on number one on turn counter the players are now randomly handed out two different characters which they should pick one of once they have chosen their character they should also choose a player color and take all the items corresponding with that color there are a bunch of cool characters for you to choose from in this game, all with different abilities, different skills, different backstories, and the artwork on these ones are pretty great done. I mean, it looks real to me. You can almost relate to this. This is sci-fi and it's not real, I mean, but you still feel like this could be real. Some sci-fi games have a tendency to flip out and go a little bit too far. But this game is within what I would say would be totally possible. So this is the character I chose, the Entertainer. Here you have some text regarding the Entertainer and what they're all about. Down here you have some special rules and here you have your starting credits. Now you should turn the board around and you will have the XP side. Here you should place your little cubes of your player colors on the S symbol representing start. Then the players need to choose which ship they would like to start with. They can choose between the Hyperion or the Aegir. If you're playing on the Terra side, you should place your little spaceship on Solar System. So this could be your starting ship. On this shipboard you see a lot of information. Up here you have the name, here you see the special rules that your ship has, down here you have the weight capacity and the power capacity. Depending on which type of cargo you have or equipment you have on your ship, this will shift. Here you have the speed of the ship, which is how many steps your ship can move. Here we have the attack that shows how powerful your ship is when it's attacking another ship. Defense is how much defense your ship have if it is under attack. And under cargo, you can see how many cargo cubes your ship can carry. Out here, you can see your equipment locations. This is where you can equip equipment card or debris card. 
at the start of the game you should put the blue cube on the power symbol and the black cube on the weight symbol. So we're done the setup and we're ready to actually start playing. Now, the game is you trading and getting money. And whoever reaches 500,000 credits first is the winner if it's a short game. If it's a normal game, you should reach 750,000 credits. And either way, you need to also get back to the solar system spot where we started. Now, this game is played out during a series of different rounds, and each round is split up into three different phases. The first one is the turn order phase. To determine who will go first, you first need to check out which ship each player has, because the transport ships, the smaller ones, would go first, before the large cargo ships. Which makes sense, because the small ones are just faster and might just fly away faster, right? If everybody has the same type of ship, we need to check out the money. The one with the least amount of money in their hand is the one that goes first. If there should be a tie, we just need to roll a die and see whoever gets the best result. In the action phase, you can do a bunch of different things, but of course you can take your little ship and move around. Remember the amount of speed here on your player board? That is the amount of movements you can do on the board. So my ship here has a speed of 4. Meaning that I can move 4 steps. So I take my awesome little ship here and I move 1, 2, 3, 4 steps. Now if there were something along the way that I would have liked to stop and do, I could have done that, but there's nothing here to do, so I just move my full amount of steps. Every time you move into a planet space, you need to draw an event card. And depending on which color planet you end up on, you draw different color cards. This was a green planet, so I draw a green card. But, if I would have ended up up here on the yellow one, I would have drawn the yellow one instead. So I drew this card. And this card will lower the demand on woods. But it also gives me a possibility to sell wood, if I have any, before the demand decreases. Or take three extra moves. So that would mean that if the demand on wood would be high, the event would now lower it all the way down to level 1. On my turn, I could also buy the goods that they are selling on this planet. On the right side of the planet, you see what the planet would like to buy and how much they are willing to pay. And on the left side of the planet, you see what they want to get rid of and sell to you. In this case, it is wood and they sell it for 9,000 credits. I have the money, so I could afford it. I have the space in my cargo, I can fit three cubes, there's four. But if I buy them now, I would become a smuggler because I do not have the trading route certificate for buying and selling wood. I could still buy it, but if I buy it without the certificate, and I end up on another planet and I draw an event card with this custom clearing symbol on right here, that means that I have been seized by custom and they will take my goods and I will get nothing back. On green planets, the certificate will cost you 3000 credits and on yellow planets, it will cost you 7000 credits. Here you can see what they're buying and how much they're willing to pay. Here you can see what they're selling and how much they want for that good. So if I would like to buy the wood and the permit on the green planet, I would have to buy, I would have to pay 9,000 plus 3,000, 12,000 credits. During your turn, you can also choose to buy equipment cards. These cards will give you different kind of benefits depending on what card it is. It will take up different kind of power and weight in your ship. And up here you can see how much you need to pay to buy this equipment. There are a lot of different equipment for you to get to your ship in this game. 
all enhancing your ship and your movements and attack and defense in different ways. Some of the equipment cards can only be bought on planets that has the same symbol connected to them that are on the equipment card. If you move into the same space as one of your opponents, you can choose to attack them. But you can only attack another player when they're not on a planet space. If you don't have the cloaking device. If you have this, you can attack them anywhere. To find out who's the winner of this battle is really not that hard. First you just need to add up your attack value, add up any extra attack value that you might have from equipment or from boost tokens, take that value, roll the die and add it all together. Now the defender needs to do the same thing but of course they will calculate their defense value instead and if they have any defense tokens. And then they roll the die to see their full amount. Whoever wins the fight gets to either take two debris cards or two cargo cubes from the opponent. You can of course only take this if you have space in your cargo. If you end up on a planet with this symbol right here, the magnifying glass, you can choose to train your character and gaining four more XP. So once you have trained you get to raise your XP four steps in one of the four different fields, giving you different kinds of abilities depending on what you choose. Sounds pretty sweet, right? Four XP new abilities, but it's also the only thing that you are allowed to do during this turn, except defending. If you move into a planet that has this ship symbol attached to it, you have the possibility of buying a new ship. If you can afford it, of course. If you choose to buy a new ship, you may not make any more move actions during this turn. But you can still do other actions. There are a lot of cool ships for you to choose from. Usually players would buy a bigger ship, go from a small transport to a bigger cargo ship, right? But you could also buy a new transporter if you just want to change. Maybe they have a better setting than your current ones. If you want to buy it, like I said, you need to be able to pay the price for it, and you can see up here. Now, you're thinking that you might be able to sell your own ship, right, to make more money, but no, you can't, because in space there is a lack of spaceships, so you simply need to take your old ship and just put it back in the box. The movements in this game is not that hard to figure out. You have these space routes and each little line is one step. To move into or out of a planet is also one step. On this board this is the only way to move, but on the other side, the Omega side, you have singularity holes, which let you jump in one hole and pump up in another one. You can of course also sell goods. So me for example, I bought some wood before, and if I would like to sell them, I would need to go to a planet that wants to buy wood. I would need to take the amount that they are willing to pay. And I would need to add up that value with the demand board. So we're done with the action phase and we move into the upkeep phase. This is where we need to refill the planets. So we need to take a look at the planet's production value. This has a plus two of nine. There's nine spaces here. Six of them have empty and we need to fill up with two, taking two from the supplies and putting them to this planet. Now we need to do the rest with the rest of the planets that needs a refill. The two equipment cards that's been on the market for the longest needs to go away. And then we need to refill the market from the left. All the cubes on the demand board, except the ones on level 6, will move one step to the right, increasing the value of those goods. The ones that are at level number 6 will decrease all the way down to level 1, indicating that somebody else have already been there to deliver these goods. And then we move the turn token one step.
there you have it people, that was Space Lane Trader for you from Arctic Lynx game. This game is quite enjoyable and really really fun. It's easy to learn, it's a fast setup, and the rules are not, it's not that complicated. When you play it, it really just makes sense how you move your spaceship around, how you buy and how you sell and how you trade. It's, it's all just coming down. So you can pretty fast sit down around a table with players that haven't played this before and get into it with just a few rounds and then you're just playing. You can battle all the players, you can rebuild your spaceship, you can involve your captain, and it's really up to you to find the strategy that works for you the best. If you enjoy space games, trading games, or just having a really really good time battling your friends, this one, this is for you. There will be a Kickstarter out on this one soon, and there will be links down here in the description, so check that one out. If you like this video, people, please give me a thumbs up. Please throw in a comment what you thought about the game, what do you think about the videos? If you like the content that I do on this channel, please hit the subscribe button and follow me, because there will be more. And it just gives me a smile on my lips every time I get a new follower. And until next time, people, please remember to keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace.